another season of Masters FC. We are back for season three with this incredible Masters FC team, a team which successfully got itself promoted to the championship. League two, we went up as champions. League one, we went up as champions, but now in the championship, the game has definitely elevated a bit. Hopefully it won't be too much of a challenge for this Masters FC team, spearheaded and led by, of course, Hunter Hunter. This starting 11 does look pretty damn good for, you know, a championship side. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna walk the league or anything, but I believe if we're gonna be competitive again this season, we still need to make sure we keep adding to the squad. We have about 20 million in our budget this season, which is pretty damn good. And most of that is thanks to our new sponsors, or should I say, our existing sponsors. Yes, at the end of the last episode, I asked you all to vote for a new shirt sponsor and a new apparel sponsor. And we've ended up sticking with both Jersey Bird and Prime again. Jersey Bird made us an awesome custom design for last season, and they've done it again here with Prime still as the major sponsor. Another very nice bespoke looking kit for Masters FC. And of course, you can't forget about the away kits as well, which also look very, very tidy, being modeled by Justin Jackson. This was last season season's winner of the Masters FC Club Store competition. Again, a reminder, every single person that picks up an item from the Masters FC Club Store goes into the running every single season to become a player on Masters FC through the Youth Academy. And ladies and gentlemen, if we take a quick look in the Youth Academy, we have a winner for season three, and his name is Giannis Papadopoulos. From Greece, he is a center back. He is six foot three Wow, that is not bad for an 18 year old. And he is 69 rated, which is almost good enough to be our starting center back. So he will just be on the bench to start this season. But if he develops quickly, I mean, if I'm Derek Cornelius, I'm probably a little bit nervous. In fact, looking at our starting 11, the only player in the team that is below a 70 rating is our left back, Reese James. And Reese James, you know, he's been solid, but he hasn't really been growing in overall. Understandably, he's 31 years of age. You may have remembered last season, we loaned away one of our left backs in George Bellow to Inter Miami. Well, that loan has worked wonders for both parties because look at George Bellow's rating now. He is up by seven. We won't actually get him back until like the end of this season, but honestly, I would love to bring him back now. Playing with Leo Messi has clearly done wonders for him, so I'm gonna recall that loan, and look, it's gonna cost us nothing. So in goes George Bello, and just like that, our entire starting 11 is above a 70 overall. That's pretty good for the championship. We've actually got quite a decent connection now with Inter Miami, don't we? I mean, I'm best mates with David Beckham, as of course we met in the last bloody season. We've been loaning players to him, and honestly, I think I might actually go for one of their players now. And and that player is Benjamin Kramashki, ladies and gentlemen. The American with Argentine descent playing under Leo Messi. He's up to a pretty good overall, to be honest, for us anyway. He's a cam, but can play both right wing, left wing, even drop in the center mid. And to be honest, I would love to have a little bit more depth in that area. So I am making a move for him. We're going to see if we can pull this signing off. He may set us back about 8 million pounds, but that should get the job done. And indeed, yes, it will. And so it is official. Benjamin Kramashki joins Masters FC from Inter Miami. We're becoming bloody feeder clubs for each other, Inter Miami and Masters FC, but hey, welcome into the club, mate. So shout out Kramashki, shout out again to Giannis Papadopoulos, and congratulations for winning the Masters FC club store competition. Again, we took his face and made it in the game for his player. We do this for one of you every single season, and if you want to enter, head over to the Masters FC club store and check it out for yourself. In fact, I've been told that three new items have dropped today. The Hunter Hunter block shirt and hoodie and an official Masters FC cap. With new faces, Papadopoulos, Kramashki on the bench as well. You know, some pretty solid reserves as well. I, I think we should be competitive. We are one hopefully good campaign away from making the Premier League with Masters FC. Will it happen? We're here in August. Our first game in the championship will be against Middlesbrough. Can we start off our season with a win? The Premier League is getting closer and closer. The campaign in the championship begins. Oh, it's a big challenge. And it's gone. It's advantage played. And Bazunum has to make a big save. I think we got away with that one a bit, but we could be on the break here. Iran Kunda is still going and still 
going. And Hunt on the rebound. He'll get the rebound. Oh, baby. I thought we stuffed up a brilliant run from Irene Kunda. But who else would it be on the opening day to score our opening goal? It is Hunter Hunter. A brilliant stop, but a brilliant follow-up. Just had to get a toe poke to it, and it was enough. I will never, ever get tired of seeing Hunter Hunter score for Masters FC. So cherish him while we've still got him. Oh, ball in. Dangerous and level. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I am so confused. What's happening? Ah, indeed it was an offside. All right. Well, that makes a bit more sense then. Oh, we got the new left back, Bello, here. What sort of play has he learned from Messi? Oh, what a goal from Clarkson. That is sublime. What a hit from, oh my God, the center mid. We will take that. Lovely. Oh, bang, good slide from Cornelius, who's on a yellow. That is dangerous. I might actually do something about that. Bring him off and bring on the new man, Giannis Papadopoulos. Let's see how he gets on the 18-year-old. I don't mind that ball in. Jackson! Eyes were focused on one Youth Academy player. We forgot about the other one. This is a blinding strike from Justin Jackson. Incredible. That's held by Bazunu. Time's going to run out, and we're going to get our first win in our first championship game. Capped off in truly brilliant fashion with that goal from Justin Jackson. And a lovely, lovely start to the campaign. Can we keep that rolling? Last season, we went on like a 24-game winning streak to start our season. I don't know if we'll do that, but I'll bloody take it if we could. Well, already an amazing start. We are top of the championship on day one, but still 45 more games left to go. What can we accomplish in our first season in the championship? After starting our season in the championship off with a win, we continue to put together some pretty impressive performances. A couple of pretty decent wins and some hard fought draws as well. This game in particular was very hard fought against Luton Town with very few chances created, but all seemingly falling to new signing Benjamin Kramashki. Unfortunately, our new man from Inter Miami was unable to stick any of them in the back of the net. And in a fierce and feisty contest away from home with plenty of hard challenges, this game would end in a goalless draw. But despite that draw, we still have ourselves an undefeated season at the moment with more wins than draws. We are already sitting second place in the league with four wins and two draws to start off our championship season. We'll bloody take that. But out of the transfer window, moving on with the season, we're now in September. And again, some hard challenges in this month as well with one immediately against Sunderland. We tried to continue the positive start to our season with a big win against Sunderland at home. Setting the tone early was Nestor Yaren Kunda with a beautiful nutmeg on Joe Bellingham. In fact, all the party tricks seem to be coming out in this game. The beaut of a roulette from Hunter Hunter saw his way past his defender and slotting it into the bottom corner for 1-0. The rest of the front three of Masters FC continued to cook with a beaut of a cutback from Alex Maiten finding Nestor Yaren Kunda for two. Football was free-flowing and the goals were flowing as well. It seemed as though Kramashki had finally broken his goal drought and got his first goal for the club until the linesman threw up his flag and denied him his first goal. His goal drought continued, but the wins continued for Masters FC, taking a big scalp here with Sunderland. And the rest of the month was okay. Uh, unfortunately, toward the end, we did lose to Sheffield United and we have been knocked out of the Carabao Cup. Our run in that competition pretty well ending almost before it even got started, straight away in the third round. But our brilliant start to the season has us top of the championship. I mean, it's still too early to start getting too excited, but lovely start. The most wins in the league so far. Who else would be leading the way with the goals but Hunter Hunter? I tell you what though, five goals from 12 games is not the return we've kind of come to expect from him. Paul Kramashki's come so close to getting his first goal. Hasn't happened for him yet. But nothing but league games in October with our exit from the Carabao Cup as we move on into a new month. Being top of the table so early on in our first season in the championship was not expected, but we were trying to hold that position as long as we could. It didn't take too great a start against Hull City away with Aaron Connolly scoring a goal super early on in the game. And it got even worse for Masters FC with our sudden star left back, George Bello, back from loan but sadly picking up an injury yet to be seen how long he'll be out for he needed to be subbed off but thankfully hunter hunter with a bit of masters fc magic scored yet another sublime free kick he's becoming absolutely automatic from set pieces and he helped us to get a draw a tough one away from home 
bloody tough start to the month in October. We lost our first two games. We probably had like a four game losing streak going on there. Thankfully, we turned it back a bit. But thanks to that momentary dip in form, we have now lost our spot on top to Sheffield United. Millwall, Watford, Norwich, they're all super, super close. And that injury was a dislocated shoulder for George Bello, so he is out for two months, probably won't be back until next year. Into the month of November, where we're playing again a lot of teams up toward the higher end of the championship table. And before we continue on, have a look at who won the Ballon d'Or. I cannot believe it with my own two eyes. Real Madrid's CJ Hunter. Yeah, the cousin of Hunter Hunter. A man who at one stage was part of Masters FC back in the day, never really made much of an impact. Nowhere near that compared to Hunter Hunter. He ended up leaving, bounced around a bit, but now at the age of 26, he's a 92 overall and a superstar. I don't think the current Ballon d'Or holder now is gonna wanna play for a championship club. We're not that caliber yet, but maybe one day in the future, could we see CJ return to Masters FC? I wonder if he'd be down. At this stage of the career, losing our spot on top of the championship is not the end of the world. However, we wanted to at least stay within the top six. But sadly for us to start off this game, we saw an unbelievable feat of athleticism from Wouter Berger, soaring at the back stick all over the back of Kane Wilson, and he would put us one nil down. This club has relied maybe a little too much at times on Hunter Hunter brilliance to keep us in the fight. And he did it once again with a brilliant solo goal to make it one one. More tense footy ensued with plenty of big challenges, but again, once more, we failed to capitalize on the home ground advantage and we only get the draw. I am honestly starting to get minorly concerned about our form here. Maybe not minorly. We've only picked up like, what, five points from a possible 15 in this month. We are barely, barely holding on to our spot in the top six at this stage. I can't complain with a goal every second game from a striker, but Hunter Hunter's, you know, regular goal contributions are not quite the same compared to League One and Two anymore. He still leads the way by far than anyone else. And Justin Jackson at just 18 years of age, he's growing in overall, he's got nine goal contributions, he is really, he's, he's the future. Last month of the year, we wanna keep our spot in the top six. Please, let's turn these results around. A road trip to the St. Mary's to take on Southampton would get off to a brilliant start with finally at last, Benjamin Kramaschke opening his account at Masters FC. A brilliant ball from Justin Jackson to set it up, all to be undone, only moments later as Southampton would score, having a ball rocketed past Luis Lopez. Before the end of the half, the two wingers would combine Iran Kunda to Maiten, and Maiten with a hell of a finish from the cutback. A ball swung in from an Elliott Watt corner would end up finding the head of Isaac Torre, who else? to give us a big 3-1 lead. And an emphatic stamp was put on the game to seal the win with this screamer from Justin Jackson, our most prolific midfielder this season. A beaut of a goal to cap off a brilliant, almost perfect day and a 4-1 win. One of the better wins we've had this season and it culminated in a decent month for us to end 2025. We got three wins, a loss and a draw, but we still enter January only sixth. I mean, yes, we're in the top six, which we will take, that's all we want. But it is a little close for my liking between where we are and like a place like 10th, for example. But bloody hell, look at the top Sheffield United. They're three points away. We've got five teams tied on 45 points at the top. The goal contributions are being shared around quite a fair bit, but bloody shout out to Tommy O'Reilly, who we've got loaned away to Stoke. He has bloody gone up five overall and has six goals for them in only 12 appearances. How's he not getting more game time? We don't seem to be scoring as many goals as we have in the past, understandably so, now that we're in a bit of a better competition. But Justin Jackson, Alex Maita, Nestor Irian Kunda, we're sharing the goals around. So there's not as many, you know, big totals. Our finances are currently down to 7 million. We could maybe pick somebody up. If there's someone out there I can sign, I will. But again, still going on with January, with the league. And we have in the FA Cup Cheltenham. So we haven't drawn a Premier League opponent, thank God. Unsure as to whether or not we would sign anyone in this window, we still continued on with the games that we had, including this big one against Cardiff at home. And despite getting off to a bit of a poor start with Luis Lopez beaten again, sadly, we would end up getting a response through an unlikely goal scorer in George Bello, back from his loner into Miami and on the score sheet. His first ever goal for Masters FC, and it comes three years into his career here. With the game level, we would rely on 
another defender, Yanis Papadopoulos, to secure a win for Masters FC with his second goal of the season. The defenders clutch up, we get a big win that helps us out in our title hunt, or at the very least, our top six hunt. As a matter of fact, we win every single league game in January, except for the FA Cup game against, of all people, Cheltenham. We have lost in the FA Cup, first round we're out. But on the flip side of things, we're back on top of the table after our very good month in the league at least. We are in deadline day. Giannis Papadopoulos has been getting a ton of offers, but I do not think I'm gonna let him go. As a matter of fact, no, I'm not going to let him go. Our squad pretty much is exactly the same. We're out of all cup competitions. We're still in the championship. We're top of the table. Can we, in February, keep our top spot? In the cold and very wet Wales, we took on Swansea City away. We now jump into February and suddenly cannot see out a result to save our lives. With a 90th minute free kick coming agonizingly close, but just hitting the side netting. Another goalless draw to go with a lot of draws that we picked up in February. Bloody look at this, five draws out of six. And the other game, of course, was a loss to Southampton. How do we keep doing this? We go from top of the table to on the fringe of falling out the top six. We are in fifth at the moment. I know he's still by far the best goal scorer in the team, but I got to admit, Hunter Hunter hasn't actually scored a goal in a little while. Going through a mini goal drought. He is 35. He's dropped down to an 80. Five overall now. Big two months coming up here, starting off with March, where we've got three games here early against some okay opponents, including Millwall. Then we've got Norwich, Sheffield United, and whatnot in April. This could be, this little two-month spell, very important to figuring out what we're going for this season. We face some very big teams in this potential championship title fight, including Norwich City. We took full advantage of their wastefulness in front of goal with a brilliant opener through Kramashki. A rare one, but a brilliant one. After struggling for goals in the second half of the season, Hunter Hunter absolutely pile drove this into the back of the net. And with an audacious screamer like that, Elliot Watt got inspired and took one out of his own and also scored it as well. It was a triumphant win over Norwich City, but with other big teams and big tests in the month, would our position in the table improve or decline? Going to be hard to say, to be honest with you. We got a couple wins, we got a couple losses, a couple more wins, a couple more losses. Literally, it was like blow for blow. We'd win, we'd lose, then we'd win, then we'd lose. We are in sixth position, all right? Now, do the math here. It is looking very unlikely for us to do anything except for go to the playoffs. Norwich City are seven points ahead of us in that automatic promotion place. We have nine points remaining to get. I don't think we're going to catch them. And Watford, they're six points behind us in seventh with nine points left on offer. I think we are absolutely destined for the playoffs. And after playing out the remaining three games, as you can very clearly see, it was not enough. We are in the playoffs. Luton Town win the league. Norwich come second. They're going up to the Premier League. We come in fifth. We will take on Stoke City. Sheffield United already with the aggregate advantage going into their second leg. What do we do against Stoke? With only one ticket to the Premier League available, it was us that would start off this two-legged fixture with a game at home in the TMB Arena. And we started off with a brilliant goal from, of course, Hunter Hunter. Who else would step up on this occasion? And the second would come through Justin Jackson. Two of the most prolific goal scorers in the team popping up in the biggest game of the season so far. We dominated the game early on and continued to do so throughout the whole first half. And in the second, it would again be Hunter Hunter to pop in and slot into that bottom corner, bagging a second for him in the playoffs and a third in the game. Things looked like they couldn't be going much better until eventually Stoke whipped in a beautiful cross, a brilliant save by Bazunu, but it was not enough and the rebound was stuck home. At 3-1, there was very much a contest on our hands, right up until, in the very last moments, Hunter Hunter slides through Nestori Iran Kunda for a simple tap-in, and 4-1, a goal to hopefully take the hope out of Stoke, and maybe a result that could see us through to the playoff final. The following game, as you can see, a bit of an uneventful 1-1 draw. That was enough, we are through. With a big win in the first leg, we took care of business in the second as well. A simple 1-1 draw, but we cruised through on aggregate. The Premier League playoff promotion final. It will be Masters FC 
versus Sheffield United. This iconic, brilliant Masters FC team is one game away from the Premier League. Now, before we play the Premier League promotion finals, ladies and gentlemen, I've just had a sudden email come across my desk. We need to pick our sponsors for next season. Now, Jersey Bird have again said that they will sponsor us for just the one season again. An offer of $10 million there. However, Nike and Adidas have also finally come through and they are offering 15 million each. So we can either remain loyal to Jersey Bird who have put together some very bespoke, nice looking kits, or we can jump ship, move to Nike or Adidas, get that little bit of extra cash. And as for the front shirt sponsors, once again, Prime Energy is willing to stick around. Bit of a bump up again, 8 million a year. But the other brands that we have are Pirelli, who want to give us 10 million a year. And the other sponsor option is TikTok also offering 10 million a year. So again, let me know what sponsors you want me to go for. Do we switch it up? We have stuck with Jersey Bird and Prime for two years straight now, and they do look solid. But again, it is up to you, just like it is down to us to see ourselves through to the Premier League. Wembley Stadium awaits. Does the first flight of English football await us as well? For glory and a spot in the Premier League, we're off and underway at Wembley. And around goes Irene Kunda. I don't even know who the hell I've got on the far side. I think it is Maiten. Ball may be back in. And surely Hunter Hunter, that's got to be a pen. And it will be. Look at this. That is an audacious attempt at a clearance. That could be a red. Could, maybe, should. All I care about is the opportunity to go 1-0 up. And in... The, oh, biggest of occasions, Hunter Hunter whips out the Panenka. He scores at Wembley Stadium and Masters FC have a foot in the Premier League door. Look at the fans. Look at where we started. We were in League 2 and now we filled half of Wembley. Let's go. Brilliant start to the game. Ball in though. Boadu off oh, the woodwork and away. That's a scare immediately after taking the lead. Jackson, ball. Into the middle. Hunter! Big save. Oh, that could have been. That could have been two. I would have been frothing had we managed to convert that last attempt. But no, we only lead by the one. But the Premier League is 45 minutes away. God. God, what a goal! Oh my God, what a screamer from Buadu! Oh my God, from about a good... 20-something plus yards away. He has smacked that into the top corner. Well out of reach of Bazunu. This game is level again with 20 minutes to go. I am making a bit of a change. Leighton Clarkson's coming off for Kramashki. Getting a bit aggressive trying to find this winning goal. I also may have started Cornelius, but I'm bringing on Giannis Papadopoulos. If we can just bang this ball forward. Oh, that's not quite the option I wanted. Iran Kunda, get to the ball, Ramsey. And we are not going to have enough time to go forward. It's going to have to be extra time. The team is all huddled up and talking through the strategy. We were so close. We had to let it go. Go from distance, maybe. Kramashki. Oh, force is a stretching save. This is getting tense. 15 minutes to go now. And no side yet has found a goal to go ahead in extra time. I cannot bear the thought of penalties to get into the Premier League. Please, no. Early ball in. Could it be? Hunter. Oh! Ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Come on! That would have been a beaut to send us through. And at this point, honestly, i got to start thinking penalties. Cafu's a better penalty taker than what? so that's it. Justin Jackson, the hothead's going to get himself a yellow card right before the end of extra time as well. Honestly, helps us out. It means we get what off and we do get Cafu on. But there is simply no time left, people. It's going to have to be a penalty shootout to determine our place in the Premier League or the championship. Surely Hunter Hunter is one of those men. He has to be. He is. You knew he would be. Brewster goes next. Brewster. Oh, I will try to go down the middle. We got Benjamin Kramashki. Next up. Oh, no. He's been denied. Patford. He's been denied. Brilliant stuff. Cafu now. That's a bit early. Oh, it's fine. Koulibaly goes next. Koulibaly. Whoa, no stopping that. Justin Jackson now. What's it going to be? Justin Jackson. Goal. Will it be Hammer? N yes, it will. Nestori, Irene Kunder up next. Surely. Nestori, yes! 
and Trusty will come up for Sheffield. He must score. If he doesn't, oh my god, that's ridiculous. I thought only Hunter Hunter had the balls to do a Penenka in a playoff final. Sudden death, Alex Mighton. It's Pedersen. It is defeat in the shootout. We come as close as one team can get in the championship to promotion and we fall short. Sudden death penalty shootout in the playoff final. Alex Mighton is denied in the shootout and we are denied a place in the Prem. We came so close, but we're gonna need to go again. Look at the morale of the players. They're heartbroken, especially Alex Mighton. The man who missed his penalty, his decisive sudden death penalty, but it's hardly just on him. I mean, try telling that to the fans though. Hunter Hunter finishing with 23 and seven from 50 appearances is not bad, down to 85. Still holding onto his overall as best he can. Iran Kunda, 16 and six. He's always the next best goal scorer behind Hunter Hunter all the time. Shout out Jackson Mighton, even if he missed his penalty. I still think he has got, you know, something to offer this club. I just hope his position next season is not disrupted by any backlash. But we'll have to wait and see what happens next season. All I know is we're in for another run in the championship. The Premier League dream is going to have to be fought for again. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Of course, let me know in the comments what sponsors you're after. Don't forget as well to become a player in the team and help us get into the Premier League. All you have to do is cop some merch from the Masters FC store. This may be an almighty setback, but we are not giving up on that Premier League dream. We will see you back in the championship for yet another season with Masters FC.